So the bed itself, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six tomato plants. And I have some other perennials that I'm planting in the ground as I get beds made. So I'm going to think, I think I'm going to just stick them into the soil here and then it, some more into that soil and then transplant them after I get the beds inside done. But what I did put is a lavender plant at the door to uh, repel mosquitoes and other pests. Um, and tomato plants and I'll put a row of something in front of it, maybe Swiss chard or, or lettuce or something like a summer lettuce that can handle this heat. This is the west side so the hottest is the south and slightly west but I have left some trees on the west side so I don't get too much direct hot afternoon sun. Um, I'll probably end up removing those trees or pruning them in the uh, winter and then just deal with the heat differently next year, next summer. Um, what else? Oh, this pipe that you saw me bury in the soil here in the bed. So what it is, is basically like a cooling and heating system for the soil. So to prevent the soil from freezing in the winter, I've insulated the outside of the skirt with two inches of insulation. So, so that's the outside of the bed there. And then um, I've got wood on the inside here. This is all cedar, so it's more rot resistant, should last, you know, a lot of years anyway. Uh, this pipe goes under the bed 12 inches below the level of the soil, goes underneath the floor and pops back up again and then goes over to the middle of the bed and I'll show you when I get to that point how the air gets drawn from here to there essentially. It's pretty amazing technology. A lot of people asking why I chose this dome instead of a conventional greenhouse. Uh, for one thing I started running the costs and realized that like a good quality a traditional rectangular greenhouse or hoop house, not with poly but with the polycarbonate or, or, or glass, is close in price. Glass is actually way more expensive. Um, so when I looked at that and then looked at the things that Arctic Acres provided like this water tank, this cooling system, the more efficient um, layout and uh, solar gain from a, from a circle or from a dome in this case. The um, soil heater that I was talking about. Basically the way it works is that the air gets drawn from that side of the greenhouse to this side through the soil and what that does in the winter it takes that slightly more um, hopefully slightly warmer temperature over by the pool. The pool is a, a thermal mass that's not going to freeze whereas 
you know, the ground and the air could be well below freezing, well below zero Celsius at 32 Fahrenheit. And um, that, that section of the greenhouse should be well above freezing because of the thermal mass of that water that's not going to freeze. So um, these pipes, four inch ABS pipes run through this soil, through the beds, the planting beds, about 12 inches below the level, top level of the soil. And then it, it runs under the ground with doors and then back up and then over and then comes out, sticks a foot above the, uh, the soil beds over there by the, by the, the water reservoir. So this fan is direct current. So this solar panel, when it's facing towards the sun and the sun shines on it, the fan's spinning. The, the more sun there is, the faster the, the fan's working. Um, it's working even right now just with ambient light. So this is blowing air, of course, out and sucking it from over there. And I've got four pipes, two pipes in this bed, two pipes in that bed. Not sure if I'm doing one in the middle or not. It wouldn't be as critical because it will be a little bit more tempered in the center of the greenhouse rather than right at the edge. In the winter, it could be minus 40 out or minus 30. And the cold is going to want to come in from the outside. In here, hopefully the air uh, stays warm enough on average that the ground doesn't freeze and therefore that bed in the center won't freeze. Um, I don't need this at this time of year. This is probably counterproductive to leave it running and having a like basically ambient temperature air go through the soil at the root level. So I'm going to disconnect this and that'll save the, the uh, little motor here too. So it'll last longer. So I'm going to do that now. I do have another one as well. I'm going to have to talk to Ben and see why he included two, two of these fans. I'm assuming that um, the reason for that is that if I wanted to hook up, it gets, so it's really humming now. It gets quite cold here, obviously, colder than a lot of places that you would have a greenhouse and be trying to winter grow food. So it might make sense to separate these and have one fan pull the air from the two pipes running in this direction and then a separate fan taking the air from that section. Or I could end up putting one in the center bed. We'll see. I think, well, we'll see. See how cold it gets this winter and, and how much the plants either keep growing or at least survive. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you about these beds. Um, got that one finished last week and this one finished this week. This, this major bed and then, well, I need to put the top plate on still this afternoon, but, and then any, anyway, I think in the next video, I'll probably be laying out the center section and get that first um, six inch uh, board down. Got to make sure I have enough large to, uh, to do that. Anyway, I hope that answers a lot of your questions about the, what I was doing with these pipes in the, in the raised beds. So if you want to continue to watch this series, I'll do a separate playlist for the greenhouse in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. And just to, to watch my most recent upload, you can click on the video in the top left hand corner of the screen. So thanks for watching, appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you at the homestead next time. Take care.